and welcome back to Those Great Locomotives, an in-depth look at quite interesting locomotives. But this time, I'm not going to cover the more popular steam locomotives. This time we're going under the wires, back along the Woodhead Railway. I have to start this video formally with an apology. I have made a mistake in my previous Woodhead related video. I said that the LNER class EM1, or British Railway class 76, were the main motive power along the Woodhead Electric Railway. This is in fact false, as from 1954 onwards, their duties on expresses were taken over by what are effectively their larger sisters, the EM2. Sometimes referred to as class 77, the EM2s were introduced to hold expresses from Manchester Piccadilly to Sheffield Victoria. The EM2s are actually somewhat misnamed, E stands for electric and M stands for mixed, so EM2 means the second electrically powered mixed traffic locomotive. But because they are passenger locos, they should be called EP1 or EE2, the second E in EE standing for express. The EM2s were actually not the first electrically powered express locomotives on the LNER, by the time of the EM2s introduction known as the Northeastern Region of British Railways. No, that honour goes to the EE1, built for the Northeastern Railway just before it was incorporated with a few other companies to form the LNER. Sadly, the EE1 was never a great success and thus the EM2 is better known and certainly more loved. Unlike the EM1s, the EM2s were not built by Metropolitan Vickers, but at the Woodhead Line's own Gorton Works in Manchester. The EM2s did all go to Metrofix as kits of parts to be assembled and fitted with their traction motors. At first sight, an EM2 could be described as an EM1, but with a cocoa wheel arrangement. Cocoa wheel arrangements being three powered axles on one bogey without con rods. To some extent, this is true. They have the same general body shape, they run on 1500 volts DC, use diamond pantographs and are driven by traction motors through gears. Though in reality, this is where the similarities end. Unlike the EM1s, the EM2s have disc wheels rather than spoked wheels. The Bobo EM1s, Bobo meaning two driven axles on one bogey without con rods, have a weight shift transformer used for acceleration under load. The way this transformer works is by lowering the current flow in the bogey traction motors. But the Coco EM2s don't have this weight shift transformer due to the basis of being larger and having more driving wheels. The smaller EM1s were built with their bogies coupled together as it were in the form of a linkage rod under the main body of the locomotive. This proved to result in poor ride quality for the driver, so this design feature was omitted from the EM2s. However, they were still reported as to having a ride quality that's best described as oh this ride is lovely and now I'm being flung across the cab. So what they ended up gaining from the tweak is puzzling indeed. All the EM2s had to show for it was their buffer beam being moved from the bogey to the body of the locomotive. The bogies themselves were actually inspired by the pair of LMS 10,000 locomotives, the first mainline diesel class in the UK. The initial plan was to order 27 or up to 29 locomotives, but it was soon realised that having 29 locomotives used exclusively on passenger duties on a line which is a mere 41 miles long was overkill. Since Britain was set on electrifying at 2500 volts, the 1500 volts Woodhead network would also have ended up being non-standard. In the end, just 7 EM2s were constructed. They were all numbered in the 27,000 sequence, and between 1959 and 1960 they were all named after Greek mythological figures. In numerical sequence, they were numbered and named 27,000 Electra, 27,001 Ariadne, 27,002 Aurora, 27,003 Diana, 27,004 Juno, 27,005 Minerva, and 27,006 Pandora. The EM2s justified their construction at first, as they were fine locos indeed, easily capable of hauling the heaviest expresses on the Woodhead network up to 60 miles an hour up the gradient. They proved to be not as successful on the freight traffic the Woodhead line had because of the lack of weight transformer. Again, not really providing a solid case for themselves as to why they have an M in their classification. These beasts were designed to make steam traction redundant, but in a rather unfortunate twist of fate, they only outlasted steam by one mere month. BR never really cared for the Woodhead Expresses, and the stopping trains never created much traffic either. To make matters worse, the track bed on Woodhead had always been rubbish, so in 1968 the speed limit was lowered to just 60 miles an hour. Suddenly, the advantage of a high speed passenger version of the EM1 completely vanished. The entire EM2 class was withdrawn in September 1968. Because they were so new, BR didn't scrap them but instead put the entire class in storage in Bury, hoping for a foreign buyer. They found their buyer in the form of the people of Orange. <laughs>
the Nederlandse Spoorwegen, or Dutch Railways, found themselves in a bit of a locomotive crisis in 1968. Seeing how they ran on 1500 volts DC, and in fact still do, they were interested in purchasing compatible locos. In 1969, a test run behind 27,002 Aurora proved satisfactory, and the Dutch bought all seven at roughly £30,000 per locomotive. An absolute bargain. All seven locomotives arrived in the Netherlands in September 1969 aboard a vessel called Cambridge Ferry, but number 27005 Minerva was so worn out that they used her as a spare parts loco, or pluck in Dutch. The EM2s were modernised and refurbished, including higher intensity headlights, more modern pantographs, replacing the old diamond design, removal of electrically heated boilers, air brakes in place of vacuum, a change from left hand drive to right hand drive, and the removal of the regenerative brake. In a country as flat as the Netherlands, a braking system like that is just overdoing it a bit. The locos also received the NS locomotive livery at the time, a colour scheme which may look familiar to British enthusiasts, as the engineer's Dutch livery is practically copied from the actual Dutch livery. And, if I may say so, the EM2s wear this livery very well. The locomotives were introduced on the Rotterdam to Venlo services, running passenger and freight trains from the harbour city in the west to the border city in the south. They were also to be seen at major stations such as Den Haag, Utrecht, Hoek van Holland and Maastricht. On Sundays, the locomotives would travel down to Maastricht in convoy for their weekly inspections. Despite their use on freight workings, the EM2s were also regularly in charge of the most prestigious services on the Dutch network, such as the Lorelei Express, a Pullman service running from Hoek van Holland to Basel, Switzerland. However, because of the use of 1500 volts on the NS network, they could only ever go as far as Venlo, because the German network does not use the same voltage. In service, the NS class 1500s as they were now known, retained their names, which makes them another oddity among Dutch electric stock. In the Netherlands, naming locomotives never really took off the same way it did in the UK. However, and this might be a fault on my part, there was a moment in time when the EM2 suddenly lost their nameplates. And for the life of me, I cannot seem to find when this was. What is known is that towards the end of their lives, 1506 Aurora and 1502 Electra were fitted with replica BR nameplates. Sadly, the NS 1500s or EM2s were living on borrowed time. Withdrawals took place from 1984 to 1986, the class working their last days on enthusiast specials. Their duties on the Rotterdam to Venlo line having been handed over to the class 1600, which are still a common sight on the Dutch network today. These rail tours themselves, the EM2 Farewell Rail Tour of the 14th of June 1986 are generally considered the greatest tour undertaken by modern traction. Highlights of the tour included visits to the big cities such as Amsterdam and Den Haag, a visit to the Horen Steam Tram Museum, itself only possible because the height of the catenary was adjusted, a triple header and filming of a full-fledged documentary. The story of the EM2s does not end in a South Holland scrapyard though, as three have been preserved. 27001 Ariadne is now based at the Science Museum in Manchester, where she is sometimes displayed right alongside the replica of Stevenson's planet. Of course, this replica is much younger than Ariadne herself. It was actually not intended for Ariadne to be preserved, as the original candidate was Aurora, but Aurora suffered extensive fire damage after having been towed with her brakes hard on. 27003 Diana is privately preserved by the NS1500 group, although currently she is awaiting overhaul. She has spent some time in the Dutch Railway Museum in Utrecht in the company of mostly other British-built locomotives, such as a Riddles 210 named Longmore. The other surviving EM2, pioneering 27,000 Electra, is housed at the Midland Railway at Butterley. Sadly, she is not in running order either. Electra has been back to the Netherlands in 1989 to participate in the 150th anniversary of railways in that country. The EM2s were too much too late not even being in BR service for long enough to receive a TOPS number, the oldest members of the class having barely 14 years of service under their belt. They are interestingly still listed in the TOPS listings as class 77, though the number 77 never appeared on the actual locomotives. The Dutch provided these venerable machines with another 18 years of service, though they were still not impactful enough to spawn any development. Although they were unlikely owners of the EM2s, it truly is the people of Orange we have to thank for the healthy representation they have in the 21st century. Having seen 1501 Diana myself, I can say that their unique design and sheer size puts them up there with the likes of the class 3750. Yes, none of them can run under their own power in the UK, 
But if DP1 still got to stretch its unpowered wheels from time to time, I see no reason as to why we cannot hope for an EM2 to come rolling into Manchester Piccadilly again one day. Hello guys. Ah, uh, man, this video... It, it was something. This, this script has perhaps had the most revisions that I've ever had to do for a single video. Perhaps more than the Ellie Gdelia video for Tea with Caramel and definitely more than the Boy Who Cried Werewolf video from December. Yeah, this one is slightly longer than the Thompson video because there's just more out there on these locomotives because, you know, their history has not been so unfavorable, let's put it like that. Also, you know, th there's still physical engines left, so that, that helps a lot. I was very close to just giving up on this video altogether because, oh, it, I had to go through so many revisions. I had to actually remake this video once because I just wasn't happy with the result. So what you're seeing now is the second try, actually. I mean, at the end of the day, like, I really like the EM2s. They're probably, like, my favorite modern electric locomotive. And I say modern, but they were introduced in the 1960s, man. Yeah, like, I, I, I really do like these locos, so, it, like, making this video wasn't a chore, but I, I was definitely not happy with um, the result, the first result of this video. So I hope you at least enjoyed this one. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. I'm planning on doing more of these. The first new engines on the list now are the Great Western Railway County, the LMS Princess, and the LNER D11. So stay tuned for those if you want to see those. And other than that, yeah, go check out the EM2 Society. They are the ones that currently are the owners of Electra. And they have their own restoration projects going on, so ch check them out. I put their links in the description. And other than that, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.